I'm going to demo uh, how to uh, overlay washes and work with texture in this in this photograph of uh, Crook Peak, which is part of the Mendip Hills in uh, North Somerset. And uh, it's in layers, the layers of uh, shapes. So the uh, receding um, hillside shapes uh, can be treated perhaps slightly differently. The background um, uh, section of distant landscape is uh, uh, contrastingly soft um, color uh, colors, and so um, I'll show you how you might go about that and also um, work forward. So what I do will be very much of a, a quick sort of study, uh, an offering of um, how you might begin to approach it, and then you can develop it more in your own time. So I'm going to start with a quick drawing. And um, I'm not going to use the whole sheet, I'm going to just quickly take a section just by hand, I think. And just isolate a bit of the surface. Normally I rule these lines, but hey, I'm going to lift my hand today. And uh, okay, so we've got this uh, foreground slope sloping away from us down to, up to the next curve. Um, and this occupies, what, um, let's see, uh, one, two, about a third of the whole space. So yeah, that's quite useful. Um, the next one will be more than a third, I mean, the top section less than a third, but it's quite useful to know that that bottom one is roughly a third. It's slightly less on this side and, um, slightly more on the right hand side. It's just a way that you might begin to orientate yourself um, with the drawing. You can always see that from a photograph you can check um, where things are in relation to the, the picture edge. This hill is much steeper. And then we have Crook Peak itself. And then behind that, we have the horizon, which is visible there, just a little bit of it. And um, then on this side, further forward, slightly further forward, we have, not much further forward, a little bit further forward, we have the base of this area of land here. So I'm going to use my ruler to just make sure I have a nice sharp edge there and quickly pop something in. So just need to correct this a little bit. So I'm using um, a 2B pencil, um, but you might, uh, uh, you'll see that I'm working a bit more heavily with it than you might need to, because uh, I want you to see this on the video. So hopefully you can see that drawing well enough there. So I'm going to start by mixing um, a cold blue here. And um, I'm going to then fill it. So I think I'm going to use cerulean. And add a little water. Cerulean blue. 
is a cold, quite a granulating blue. Um, the sky itself looks quite greyish. If I wanted to warm that a little bit, I could add almost a little bit of uh, almost anything, but maybe if I add a little bit of blue purple, that might um, just very slightly warm it. Um, let's see what that does. So, so a wet on dry approach would be to um, maybe begin with the line of materials. Tip of my brush to get the get the um, uh, pigment into the edges, and this is Canterbury Point here, which is just in the distance. I can see a little bit of um, slightly nearer coastline just here beneath the hill. Um, and then there's quite a lot of turbulence, but distant turbulence in the sky, which I think I could do wet and dry um, uh, with my brush, the tip of my brush just um, giving a sort of sense of the, um, the movement and the shapes in the, in the sky there, the clouds. So you might find you would like to go in with more detail into the sky. But I'm just going to leave it like that for this um, a little bit more paint into the wash up there to have a bit more contrast higher up. Then um, also another thing I can do when I've got the blue on my brush is I can take a little bit of the uh, pigment out and I can dry brush a little bit of that um, distant view slightly more pale just there. Um, while the sky is wet you can always drop another colour in and you know, have a little, do a little bit of wet and wet if you want to uh, have a play with it. So um, the next thing to look at would be this distant hill here, Cook Peak itself. Which is a sort of more um, a cooler, it's more blue mauve, um, and the yellow, the gold and yellow is is less pronounced. So maybe what would be a good idea to decide on yellow? Maybe I'll just use my lemon yellow, cadmium lemon, to start with. I'm going to get some of that out into a, a cool. Add some water to thin it, but not too much. Let's try it out first. That's quite thin, but it might do fine for the for, for the back hill. Um, I'm going to add a, another one, make it just a stronger mix, and a slightly warmer mix. I'm going to add some. Uh, uh, Oreoli to this. Maybe a little bit of uh, um, yellow gold. It's called golden. It's a thinner in gold. Get a warmer yellow. Oh, wow. um, so if you haven't got these colours, don't worry. You can um, use something equivalent. So I've got a, a cooler yellow and a warmer yellow, should I need it? So this is just lemon yellow, this first one. And I'm going to pop it on as a, just a continuous underpainting. You can still see some of the, the marks of my drawing, but I'm not worried about that. That will become part of the texture of the painting as I, as I proceed. 
So down in the hollow of this hill, there's less yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use water, spread that colour and thin it as I go down into that hollow. And make sure that that's a little bit cooler down there. Just while it's wet, I can take off what I don't want. Keep it quite a thin underpainting. The next hill down, I want that to be a little bit brighter. So I think while I'm working with my yellows, it doesn't really matter if they run together at this stage a little bit. Um, I'm just going to put on a somewhat warmer underpainting to this hill. And again, down here in the photograph, the yellow um, disappears really and it becomes more of a, um, a bracken colour. So I'm going to use my brush again to sort of create a blend into into nothing down there. And at this point you could blend in that other colour, but I'm going to work one, one colour off the other from dry washes this morning to show that technique as, much, as well as I can. So here in the foreground, I'm going to use this one again. Putting it on a bit more boldly, again with a little water to modulate the, um, the colour. So quite a sort of sh a strong, sharp, um, yellow in the foreground. That's my underpainting. Uh, I need to dry that. Uh, so I'll just see if I can get my hair dryer. isn't quite dry but I think by the time I have mixed my next set of colours it will have dried. So, in a dry spot. And okay, now I'm looking again at the photograph and I'm noticing how um, blue mauve, um, almost bruise coloured this whole hill is. Um, uh, and so I'm going to it's got this hints of bracken colour, but because it's a little bit more distant than, than the middle ground, uh, it really almost wants a wash of something to, to indicate that. So, I've already got this sky colour, which is a, um, a good way to start, a good place to start, I think. Cerulean and a uh, hint of... Uh, um, it was permanent violet, wasn't it? Uh, cerulean and permanent violet might be good places to start, or you could perhaps go for ultramarine um, as uh, a colour, which granulates nicely also for the, the texture of the hill. Anyway, for now I'm going to stick with the cerulean and violet. Let's see a little bit more of it. I probably need. And it's a good idea to test the colours as we go along. So. That would be good. I also need a stronger one. So in fact, I think I may also, um, yep, I may use cobalt blue. A variant, a warmer, slightly, slightly richer blue variant, and also the 
for the bracken colour, I'm going to go for red ochre, which I think I will also mix a little bit with the cobalt blue. Red ochre is another name for it, it's, it's English red. So cobalt blue with the red ochre should give me that muted um, slightly milky even I think it was in crimson in that, but keep it, keeping it pale so that it suggests that sort of soft texture of the hill. I think that might be something to use. Right, I've got some three colours. I'm going to start with the first. And I'm going to put that almost everywhere on this hill, I think, to start with. First is a underpainting. So this is wet on dry washes, where you can modulate what you've done by adding another layer um, of of, uh, of colour. So the trees catching the light down in this hollow um, have a silvery quality and so um, I'm hoping that this colour will give me that silvery quality in the hollow there. Now if I'm working in wet on dry washes I would let that dry and um, then I could work te the textures and other colours on the top of it. Um, I think for the sake of speed, I'm just going to add a little bit wet into wet here to um, suggest that I see immediately the colour's not quite warm enough, so I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson to that to warm it up, make it more purpley. But still a muted purple with the cerulean blue being quite a, a cold blue. You're not going to get a pure purple that way. So I think we can use this down here to kind of suggest um, the textures, begin to suggest the textures of the hillside. So with my tissue, I can also lift out. Draw that. With that little bits of texture and light. Um, add a little more cerulean to get light glancing on this side of the um, And with the tip of my brush, I can add little tiny details if I want to. Those little hawthorn bushes which are clinging to the top of the hill there and so on. You can start putting wet on dry, you can put more texture and uh, um, wet on damp, of course you can't, it's going to soften. So um, a little bit of each to start with and then when this layer is uh, dry we can, we can continue to um, develop that texture and modulate it a bit more. So whilst I'm working with this colour on my brush, I'm just going to try to get a bit of um, texture going uh, within these trees. Just a little bit against that edge of the next hill. So I'm doing this all very quickly, but just to give you an idea of the, the approach that you might take. Okay, the next hill. Um, Ideally, that should dry. I'll just give it a very quick burst of hot air. And so I can come forward with the texture 
um, and the colour, sharpen the colour, sharpen the colour. So I can see some quite sort of definite um, greens, a bit blue greens there on this hill. And that's a little bit different from the foreground. So if I add that green in here, um, that will uh, give that hill um, a slightly different characteristic. So I'm going to use my lemon yellow and my cerulean blue still. Let me mix a slightly stronger colour. This will give me quite a clean, sharp green, so it may be too clean. Um, let's try it. Cerulean blue and lemon yellow do give quite a good strong green. And that's quite a nice blue green. Maybe it's okay. It might be too um, pure. Yes, I think what I'll do is I'll add a little hint of the earth red that I use. Just add a little hint of uh, English red to just slightly take the edge off that green. And twist it. That's probably okay. So, to get a texture uh, that's quite broken, we want probably quite a broken, broken sort of edge to our brush. So this is just a, this is just the round number sixteen, um, no, number twelve. Beg your pardon. The round number twelve. Um, but if I do that, if I spread the the hairs, I can turn it almost into a fan uh, style brush and I can get texture that way. So, um, I'll it into the colour and then just slightly texture that hair with that green. Um, yeah. So, playing around with the brush, you can try different things to make a, a sort of a brush do the jobs that it needs to do. And get more of a broken texture on the skin side. Dry brush is good as well. Okay. So having done a little bit of that, I'm now going to go to my pre-mixed um, soft russety brown. And I'm going to put quite a bit of that on here. So where the light is catching the tops of uh, the uh, clumps of uh, ferns, bracken and so on here, um, that's the kind of light quality that I'm looking for in this colour. And then uh, at a certain point I can add the, the darker values, the bluer values. So this is still quite a muted, um, muted red. And again I'm trying to use my brush. I'm looking back and forth in the photograph for my work um, and um, trying to focus not entirely down here but a great deal on the photographs so that I'm actually letting my brush carry information onto the paint paper rather than falling into a sort of patterns of invention which result if you don't if you stop looking uh, just keep trying to look back at the subject matter. It's the same as when you're working you know from the motif for life. It's the same sort of thing. Let the eye move back and forth and um, uh, develop a rhythm in a way of, of looking. So I'm just popping some of the blue mix that I uh, did earlier, the cerulean blue and earth red mix. Some cobalt blue. stronger textures. Again, I'm working wet into wet here, but if you wanted to work wet into dry, you easily could get more of a kind of um, brittle and 
sharply textured surface from working wet on dry. So here we are, you can go on adding texture um, with the brush until you've got the sort of texture that you want. Um, and if it's all coming out too sharp, don't forget you can lift out with a, with a tissue, um, or you, you can soften with uh, your brush, you can soften edges with your brush, uh, adding a little bit of water into the mix. Um, or you can lift out around shapes with your tissue, or a bit of, a, bit of everything. So you can get more texture that way. Then put bits of texture in the distance and that way as well. So it takes a little while to, 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 to develop a surface like this through um, maybe layering one texture over another, but um, I hope that's sort of given you a kind of way into being able to have a go at that. So I may come back to that in a minute when it's dry, I can overlay more. It's just a kind of preserve an edge there, which is dryish. And I'm going to move forward a little bit more. Um, maybe I want to adjust my colours a little bit more now. Make the, um, the red a bit more goldy orange with alizarin crimson and cadmium orange, which serve as more colour. Um, and also still use my Earth red with probably and crimson in it as well. So trying those. I've got very broken textures here on this wall. So I mean I could still continue to use my number 12 um, and um, use it dry brush to get patterns of uh, these rough little hawthorn trees. And, um, different textures in the foreground on this hill. So this may be the first colour I do, isn't it? building up perhaps with you know, a couple more colours um, until I've got these sort of little um, wintry little trees um, just sharp and sharp enough against the light as they So the overall texture of the view may be roughly dry brush. And keeping my eye moving back and forth, trying to, to kind of get my brush to move in response to the texture, which is a little bit stronger in the foreground and then more delicately textured back here. If I start in the foreground with more paint on the brush, I can then work back to the background where there's, where there's less paint on my brush and get a softer, slightly more sort of distant texture going in the background. So obviously that could be built up quite a bit more. Um, I'm also going to change to phallocyanine blue, which is a strong dark, strong blue, and um, a little bit of earth red in the foreground. So, building up more contrast. In the foreground. I'm just imitating it as fast as I can so I don't take too much of the morning away. 
Um, and you can see how little bits of extra contrast can give that sense of the backlighting. And then, of course, there are the shadows, the soft shadows cast by things as well. So adding a little bit more texture. Uh, it's needed and so gradually building up a sense of um, uh, texture and space on the hillside. So I mean I could go back into this and also texturize this quite a bit more with this colour. Um, and there are some wonderful sort of shadows as well um, cast in this hill. So there's the pattern of the shadows as well as the patterns of um, the clumps um, of, of, hill, of um, well, what would it be? Gorse and bracken. Uh, so little bits of texturing and tinting will help that um, illusion to materialise. So. Obviously, there's a lot more I can do on this hill as well, um, indicating the more sharp features. Again, the shadow of the peak on the hill behind, and um, textures here. This whole kind of edge of the hill, which drops away in such a gorgeous way, which is to suggest that. Yeah, just show you how you might go about it. Yeah. yeah, there are lots and lots of lovely features. So a bit of dry brush comes in very handy. Wet on dry uh, washes and um, dry brush textures that you might want to add. 